How we doing today, guys? It's Jesse with the Common Man Corpus Christi. I've got some very happy news to report to you. We woke up to a very, I woke up to very good news this morning from the Supreme Court, um, and I'm going to read you a little bit, a couple of articles about some of the stuff that's going on with the Texas Heartbeat Bill, and some of the very happy news we've got from that, and then some wilder and crazier news. But before we do that real quick, I just want to show you guys our little Common Man Corpus Christi t-shirt store. If you guys want to come over here and check out and help support the channel, that would be great. Um, we've got some cool t-shirts. We'll be com we're coming up with more eventually. So, But yeah, go check that out. So on to the news. Texas Heartbeat Act is now, it is now law. How would lawsuits work? The so-called heartbeat, the so-called heartbeat act banning most abortions will be enforced civilly rather than criminally. It also allows people to sue other people who provide abortions. So this is one of the things that's a little bit different about the Texas law versus most of the laws we've tried passing in the past um, to eliminate or to at least challenge Roe v. Wade. So that's one of the things that's a little bit different about this. Check us out. Austin, Texas. On Wednesday, the Texas Heartbeat Act or Senate Bill 8, SB 8 to be specific, became law. The Supreme Court, this is what I woke up to this morning, voted five to four to let the stand to let the law stand late Wednesday night. Dude, this thing came out at like eleven o'clock midnight, something like that. It was super, super late at night. But I got to see it first thing this morning. Super good stuff. So a lot of people talk about what that might mean for the future. We'll just wait and see. Protests popped up across Texas calling for the law to be overturned. Oh, they don't they they want to kill babies. Okay. However, if that does not happen, lawsuits against those who provide or help provide abortion services can occur. The law will be enforced civilly rather than criminally by members of the public. See, this is where things are a little bit different. Because of medical privacy rules protected by the Health Insurance Portability and Account HIPAA, provi provi proving an abortion occurred can be a challenge. That means lawsuits over abortion will be equally challenging. I don't know that anybody knows how it will work, said David Donati, a staff attorney for the American Civil ACLU, based in Houston. ACLU doesn't even want to protect human rights. SB 8 does create all sorts of reporting requirements. For example, record keeping requirements on behalf of physicians. But at the same time that it creates those requirements, all of the privacy protections here, here, they still apply. There was nothing in the bill specifically that talked about how people know or understand that an abortion occurred, said Chelsea Human, the Texas director for the anti-life. Oh, no, wait. Oh yeah, there is nothing in the bill specifically that talked about, sorry, there is nothing in the bill that specifically talked about how people knew or understand that an abortion occurred. So Chelsea Yeoman, the director for the pro-life group Human Coalition Action. The law allows for essentially anyone to file a lawsuit if the abortion happens. The plaintiff would get a cash reward of $10,000 if the lawsuit succeeds. Lawsuits can be filed against doctors who perform abortions as well as a person who drives a patient to a clinic. Don't be involved. Usually when civil litigation involves medical information that a patient wants to keep private, judges permit the parties to designate documents confidential or file them under a seal so they are not publicly accessible. Andrew Stevens, an attorney who represents a defendant in a federal case brought to the Supreme Court by pro-murder, see this is where I meant to put it in, pro-murder advocacy groups said in an email Wednesday. You could imagine that an anti-abortion activist, so a pro-life person, somebody who would like babies to be born, you can imagine that an anti that a pro-life activist or someone who just really wants that 10,000 bounty will want to bring the case when they will bounty will want to bring the case where they want to bring the case. That's pretty shady. Uh, anyway, human, well that's weird for them to say. That's shady for them to say. Somebody's after somebody wants to save a baby's life just because they want to save children's lives just for a $10,000 reward. No, I don't think that's how this works. I don't think that's how this world works, especially anybody on the pro-life side of things. Human, previously a constitutional law litigator, said lawsuits might not come from just anyone who believes an abortion happened. Instead, the lawsuits might come from those with personal knowledge of what happened. It could be the unborn child's father who knows there was an abortion conducted and he said he, said he lost a child, Yeoman said, which, oh, I'd be, don't even get me started on the fact that fathers get no say in this and y'all want to just talk about your body, your child. Oh, mm, takes two to tango. That's my kid too. I think any human pro, yeah, I think any human matters. Any human, no matter what stage of development, no matter how old, they have a purpose and they have a dignity. Yeoman said, "We're seeing this play out across the world. We know humans matter and their lives are worthy of protection." Amen, sister, on that one. 
All right, so let's see here. I've got another article we want to look at, but let's look at some of the reactions from Twitter real quick. Um, I think let's do this one first. Let me see if I can get it to reload. Hopefully it's the same page that where it was. Ah, -dee -da -dee -da. Sorry guys, it's taking a minute. I thought the page was already ready to go. All right, so this was a really great Twitter thread that I thought um, really explained a lot of, at least, I think it was one of the best ways I ever saw anybody explain why abortion is such a major issue to the left and they always freak out over it. So this is from John Hayward. Um, and let's see if it gives a little thing on here about John. Yeah, there you go. Writer for Breitbart News, conservator, author, and commentator. So you know where he's coming from. Abortion was the first sacrament of the modern church of, of the state which later incorporated global warming, critical race theory, trans extremism, and most recently coronavirus, coronavirus hysteria. Abortion is the rock upon which it was built. The faithful go berserk at threats to it. Roe v. Wade was, a cru was crucial to the rise of government as a religion for several reasons. It was an act of raw judicial power of transcendence over democracy and the constitution by the elite priesthood. It's hilarious to hear anyone who defends Roe blather about defending democracy. With Roe, the elite priesthood declared that something it wanted was good and therefore must be made lawful. It worked backward with comical clumsiness to gobble together a legal rationalization for opposing its will using religious terminology like punerbris and emanations. Eh, sorry about that one, guys. Roe v. Wade is a religious document, the first gospel of the Church of the State, not a logical legal decision. It was a bureaucratic miracle conjuring new rights into existence from the ether, transcending both democratic popular will and Republican con and the Republican and Republican Constitution. Now remember, we're not a democracy, we're a republic. Roe also established the primacy of the church of the state above traditional religions. Today we accept the ruthless ruthless cleansing of traditional faith from every corner of public life, while adults and children are forced to chant the gospel of the state and perform its rituals. Today, it's unthinkable to make a policy based on faith, impose moral judgments, or question science! Unless your faith says there are 57 genders, your moral judgment is the inherent evil of white people, or you defy science by treating babies like tumors. That all began with Roe v. Wade and its elevation of a new, bizarre, anti-human state religion forged by elite consciousness raised above popular will, traditional morality, Republican institutions, and the science of human pregnancy by an act of pure judicial power. The long-term social effects of abortion on demand were vital to the growth of the church of state as well. The crisis of illegitimacy fed the welfare state. Marriage was mortally wounded and bled to death over the following decades, eliminating a rival to state power. Easiest way if you're pregnant with a baby, stay with the father, build a good life. Well, if you don't have that, then I guess you'll marry the state. When intact families are passing values of independence and responsibility to children, along with intergenerational wealth and opportunities, it's hard to stampede people into accepting socialism. Broken families living in despair on rented property are much better. Abortion became hu a huge money laundering system for left-wing politics, creating many acolytes for the church of the state. If you're old enough to remember the left railing against big business, you'll know abortion was the one titanic industry whose wealth was never questioned. Perhaps most crucially, the first gospel of the church of state enshrined the ideal of collective over individual responsibility. Individual men and women were no longer to be held responsible for their choices. Everything now was society's collective problem. That's an incredibly powerful and destructive intellectual virus. Injected into the American operating system at such a potent point of vulnerability, the beginning of life itself. Many other collective responsibility arguments were built upon that foundation. Consider, it's treated like a sacrilege to argue a man and a woman are equal, equally and individually responsible for the actions that led to the conception of a child. It's the original heresy against the church of state. There are now many others, with more being added constantly. I think he really nailed the head. I think he or the, hit the nail on the head really well for that one. Um, it, I just, I, I, I think it's, I think it's spot on. You know, I, I think he made a really good point that abortion really was the choice of the government to decide our morality, and completely blanketing it to just give you some easy way out. Abortion should never be used as a form of birth control ever. There are a million options out there. If you get pregnant in this modern day and age, there's no excuse to say you didn't know. 
and there's no excuse to say you didn't have access to birth control. There's a free, there's like four free clinics just in Corpus alone that you can go to and get free birth control anytime, any day of the week that you want. So don't give me that BS argument. Don't even start. All right, so let's see how the other side of Twitter reacted. This is Richard Hanania. I have no idea. So let's see what Richard's little stuff's got here. So president of the CPIScenter.org, fellow defense properties, former Columbia SIPA. Oh, Columbia. That's a scary thought right there. This is what really, this is what made me angry. I couldn't believe somebody would actually say this. This was their argument against the heartbeat bill. In any of y'all with children with disabilities, put your head in duct tape right now because your head's going to explode when you hear this. You can't screen for Down syndrome before 10 weeks and something like 80% of Down syndrome fetuses are aborted. By the way, that's also one of the most misdiagnosed, misdiagnosed fetal ailments as well. If red states ban abortion, we could see a world where they have a fi five times as many children with Down syndrome and similar, similar numbers for other disabilities. Okay, I'm going to stop right there before I even get to his next little BS comment down here. Okay. I don't know how many of y'all have ever met people with Down syndrome. I think the majority of us have, have. I went to high school with one, a really good friend of mine who stood with me at my, or was going to stand with me at my wedding. His brother is one. My little brother was born 28 weeks gestation. He's got issues. You know, there's a lot of people out there that have these mental illnesses that live very happy and successful lives. Hell, I just read a report about a Down syndrome couple like a couple of months ago that opened up an ice cream truck. And they drive around, they're running their own businesses, they're working jobs. Who the hell are you to decide just because they've got a mental issue of some kind that it's your job to deny them their right to life? Okay? So, let's go on to his next parts. Could be the outliers in the whole developed world. What? Why? Because we actually bring children into this world even if they are special and have needs? There are already negative stereotypes of Americans in these states. One can imagine it getting much more extreme. What if they also ban genetic engineering and embryo selection with, uh, while other places go ahead? Oh. Will they maintain their belief in a small safety net and lower government spending in such a world? Yeah. Yeah, we will. That's what we like. That's the best part about freedom. Would liberals change their mind about government spending if it ends up going to the states that have much higher costs due to these laws? Many interesting things to think about. This guy's... Okay, here we go. Sour Patch Lids, one of my favorite from Tim Kess. Richard, what the fuck? Actually, fuck that. Richard, what the fuck? I was selling you as a reasonable liberal. <laughs> At what ratio? So well deserved. Yeah, he got ratioed like an SOB on this one. Uh, 259 comments compared to 223 likes. That is never a good sign. I can't see the quote retweets on here. Oh, there you go. Oh, my God. 4,064 quote retweets. What do you want to bet? 90% of those were people that did not agree with him, especially when you only have 147 retweets. Those of you that don't know much about Twitter, the retweet's the easiest way to say you agree or want to share somebody's opinion. If you're quote tweeting, most of the time you're saying something in addition to what they said, and a lot of the time it ain't good, especially when you only have 868 likes on your post. So yeah, so that was this douchebag. He later goes back and says, oh my God, I can't believe... He says, just for full transparency, just for full transparency, okay, he does go back on later and say a little a little tweet later, I'm assuming trying to do a cover his ass, a CYA kind of situation. He goes back and says, oh, I was never, I was never saying that you should, that, that people with Down syndrome should be aborted. All of these conservatives just jumped on and assumed this. Okay, I might not be the most formally educated person on the face of the planet, but I think it's kind of hard to read that any other way. You're saying you would rather see children with special needs die and be murdered in their mother's womb than be born with Down syndrome. And it's somehow going to cause a drain on the other states because we have more people with mental ill, we have more people with special needs in this state than all of a sudden we're going to need more federal government money. You know what? You can take your federal government money and shove it up your ass. I would gladly rather have a million Down syndrome children that I have to take care of myself than have this kind of person living in my society among me. 
monstrous, absolutely monstrous. So this is another, this one's another one that's probably going to pop up here in a second, but this is, this is from uh, Robert and Robert was talking about the fact of why it was trending, why Down syndrome was trending on Twitter. This is how sick these people are. So many people agreed with it that Down syndrome is now trend, was trending on Twitter at some point today. It's probably still trending. So let's read his quotes because I like his take too. Why is Down syndrome trending on Twitter? Because some people are arguing we need permissive abortion laws so we can screen for people with Downs and kill them in utero. So wrong. No member of the human family is inherently superior or inferior to any other in basic dignity. Oop, too far. Sometimes it's worth remembering that what became known as the Holocaust did not begin with the murder of Jews or Slavs or Romani. It began with the killing of disabled and cognitively impaired. They were regarded as useless eaters and declared, I'm not even going to try that, but I bet it's some funky word in German. Okay, I tried it. I failed miserably. The ideology that held Down syndrome people and others to be lives unworthy of life, which I guess is probably what that last part means, did not originate with Nazis. It predated their rise. Its architects were sophisticated, urban, progressive people. Progressive. Like legal scholar Carl Binding and medical specialist Alfred Hoach. I'm assuming that's Hoach. Claiming that we are eliminating Down syndrome by killing people with Down syndrome so long as we catch them early enough is like claiming they were eliminating poverty by killing poor people. Valid point. It's barbaric and the very thought of it should fill us with revulsion. Don't be the person who will someday utter those four dreadfully sad words, but I was silent. Okay. I think he makes a really, I think he makes some really good points there. That's what everybody's been trying to warn about. You know, anybody that reads about the Holocaust knows that they had labels, not just for Jews. They had labels for gays. They had labels for people with mental disorders. It wasn't just Jews running around with stars. I remember, I don't remember what grade I was in, but they showed us a picture of all the different symbols and things that they used for the Holocaust. And they included stuff for gays. They included stuff for Jews. They included stuff for people with mental disorders. This is what happens when you divide people based on superficial means. Okay? And that's exactly what this is. So, and then, okay, so this is something that I promise I'm going to try to leave this on a positive note. I really do. This made me sick when I heard it earlier. This shows you how freaking depraved these people are. Okay? They, here we, well, we'll just, let's just read it. Let's just read it. All right? This is, this is disgusting. From the Daily Mail, Texas abortion clinic terminated six, let me, okay, let's, you can read it, right? Texas abortion clinic terminated 67 pregnancies in just 17 hours as women raced to get procedures before new law went Texas abortion clinic murdered 67 babies in just 17 hours as women raced to get murdering their children done before the new law went into effect. Whole Women's Health in Fort Worth, Texas performed 67 murders in just 17 hours before new abortion restrictions went into place. The U.S. Supreme Court declined an appeal that would halt the new law until it went un- it underwent judicial review. New restrictions opens any woman who received an abortion six weeks removed from her last menstruation to a $10,000 lawsuit from anyone in America. Many women do not yet know they are pregnant yet at six weeks, and some abortion advocates argue the law effectively bans abortions. Yeah, that's the point, okay? I wanted to, we obviously don't need to go into the rest of the article because it's just going to talk about things we already, we already read in the other article. But this is, I, I want you to understand, when I say we are up against evil, okay, I am not parsing words. I am not being flamboyant with my language, okay? I am being very serious. This is how sick these people are. They rushed because they knew the law was going into effect at midnight. They rushed out of their, they went out of their way and rushed to commit 67 murders. If it's just a medical procedure, like you all claim, why would you go somewhere that wants to rush through it? Sounds like a little bit more, you know, maybe if you're rushing through a medical procedure because they're fixing to make it illegal, that right there should be your first second to kind of pause and think about what you're doing. 
Why would have so many people come together to make this illegal if it was just a small medical procedure? So yeah, that I just I just wanted you to know that. I wanted you to see that. I wanted you to hear that. I wanted you to know that article because that's just sick. But look, like I said, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna end this on a slightly on a more positive note. So let's go back up here and look at this. Read that headline. Texas Heartbeat Act is now law. Okay, that means today in Texas and yesterday in Texas. There is going to be people born alive in this state who last week would have not been born. We are going to add so many more people to the population. We are going to have so many more geniuses out there. We're going to have so many more blessings in our world. You know, somebody made a, somebody's argument, I just, uh, this boggles my mind, especially coming from a mixed race family. Somebody argued that because 70 to 80% of abortions are performed in low income areas, that this was going to negatively impact minorities. Okay. So stop and think about that for a second. They are coming out and publicly saying they support the murder of minority children, that they don't want the minority population to expand. Now, our side gets accused of being racist an awful lot, yet we're the side fighting to make sure millions more children are born to minorities in this country. I I can't remember the exact number off the top of my head, but I think since Roe v. Wade has been enacted, there have been 33 million abortions child murders in this country. Okay. Abortions, child murder in this country, 33 million. And now you're telling me 70 to 80% of them come from minority communities. How many more black people, how many more Hispanics would we have in this country adding to the fruits of this beautiful nation? If you would have never followed Margaret Sanger's racist ideals to stick abortion clinics in minority neighborhoods. You want to see who the real racist is? Let's, why don't you look in the mirror and see who's advocating for the murder of black and brown children in their mother's womb all across the country. How many more Alan Wests would we have gotten? How many more Eric Julies, Young Ripa, 5'9"? How many more quarter black Garrett's would we have gotten? How many more, you know, I can't believe I'm having a brain. Ben Carson's. How many more Ben Carson's would we have gotten? How many more Thomas Sowell's would we have gotten? How many more Larry Elders would we have gotten if this wouldn't have happened? And now Texas is doing, is one step closer to completely eliminating the scourge of abortion and child murder, at least in the state of Texas. And today, for everything that's been going on and for all the times I disagree with the politicians that run Texas. Today, I am very proud to say I am a Texan and I moved here by choice. I might not have been born here, but I got as fat, I got here as fast as I could. And I am damn proud to say that Texas stood up for life and will refuse to let these racist, genocidal maniacs continue to murder brown black and yes white children as well because all lives matter i don't care if it's while you're in your mother's womb or while you're out whether you're black brown with special needs or any other combination i would rather see you alive than not be here at all so rejoice texans and all of the rest of you pro-lifers everywhere else on the face of this planet Rejoice because today is a damn good day for us, for every other unborn child out there, and for every pro-life in the world. This is good for our soul. This is good for our humanity. So once again, I am proud to be a Texan today because Texas stood up for life. This is Jesse with The Common Man. Thanks, guys.